Now, it's unusual in the automotive world today to find such an effective and successful combination of all that's luxurious and premium and extreme performance as well. And with a four-door car to boot, or five-door in this case. Now, it is this roof line, this coupe-like roof line that we keep going on about. That's the effective signature when it comes to Audi's sport packs. It started with the A5. It's something that's been sort of perfected and honed a little bit better when the A7 came out with this shape. It looks really nice. It looks so different and distinctive on the road as well. And uh, it doesn't really compromise too much on the headroom on the inside. Now, the other thing I liked about this car, as you've seen just now, is the 8-speed uh, ZF gearbox. Now, a lot of really high-end cars have been using this 8-speed in different formats and different variations and ZF has been very successful with it. Now, we've talked about it so much for so long that uh, it may be interesting to go behind that technology just a little bit and so which is why we're going to duck in to what's been happening with ZF and what we can expect going into the future. Sandrat Fabrik Friedrich Schaffen. It takes some time to pronounce that correctly, or at least get close. It translates to Gearbox Factory and ZF, the German engineering firm we are talking about, is famous for exactly that. Making gearboxes. The company started its operations in 1915 in the aerospace industry and in 1919 entered the passenger car and CV segment to make transmissions. Today, ZF's brilliant 8-speed automatic transmission does duty in a range of cars, from Jaguars to BMWs. We got the chance to check out one of the latest gearboxes from ZF, the 9-speed on the Range Rover Evoque. And also the Tata Nano, which has been fitted with a column-mounted electric power steering system recently in the Twist. So this little car that I'm driving is the Tata Nano and uh, this one has the electronic power steering. It is developed by ZF and uh, what they've done is fitted a small motor onto the steering column itself. As far as the feedback of the uh, steering system is concerned, it's fairly precise but at the same time, uh, I don't think uh, it's, you know, it doesn't give you that real feel. Uh, it is very light, no question about it uh, and uh, it's absolutely phenomenal at city speeds uh, going around tight bends and all but it doesn't really weigh up if you gain speed not that you really can gain a lot of speed in the Tata Nano but nevertheless uh, it should ideally weigh up a little bit which it doesn't. ZF's powertrain business contributes 58% of total business while chassis technology constitutes the remaining 42%. Though Europe is the biggest market for ZF it expects over 50% of its business will be outside of Europe by 2025. In India, ZF's plant is in Pune. Now on to the Evoque. What I'm driving now is a Range Rover Evoque and it is a little bit different. This one has the 9-speed ZF gearbox instead of the regular 8-speed that we're used to. Uh, now, outright, you cannot really tell the difference between the driving character of the 9-speed and the 8-speed, but uh, let me tell you that it feels a little bit more refined, it feels uh, a little bit more flexible. It is also going to be a little bit more uh, fuel efficient. ZF's 9-speed automatic gearbox is the world's first passenger car transmission with 9 ratios. ZF claims that it will help in fuel savings between 10 to 16%. This transmission is designed for passenger cars with a front transverse mounted engine and for front wheel drive or all wheel drive applications. Moving to the domain that ZF calls the off-highway business. It manufactures and provides a host of engineering solutions for working machines like backhoe loaders, graders, wheel loaders, etc. Its power shift transmission is specially designed for backhoe loaders. Other interesting products like graders also use ZF gearboxes. 